Hi guys, today we're going to be working on this pastel swirl water marble for Easter. So if you'd like to see how I did it, just stay tuned. First things first, I'll be applying a base coat. Today I'll be using Ready for Takeoff. And you can, of course, use whichever is your personal favorite. Okay, next I'm going to be applying my base color. I'm going to be using Color Club French Tip. And as you can tell by the logo, it is a pretty old bottle. I had to thin it out quite a bit so it was usable. For the marble, I'm going to be using Under the Black Light, Meet Me at the Rink, and Diggin' the Dancing Queen. And these are all, I think this collection is called the Poptastic Pastel Neons, and they all marble really well. So not just these three colors. I did some testing with others from the set. It's a uh, seven piece collection and I'll show a couple of those at the end so you see how well they all work together. I'm going to go ahead and build my bullseye and as usual I'm working in a cup of room temperature filtered water. Once my bullseye is built, I'm going to go ahead and go up to the top and down to the bottom. And I'm also going to do my best to kind of anchor the bullseye to the sides so that it doesn't move around when I start drawing. And I kind of think of this as an old fashioned spiral because it's the way that I used to draw them before I started doing them on top of a burst design. And you can see there kind of the whole design starting to move. I'm just going to re-anchor it as best I can and then go right in and pick up where I left off. And continue in toward the center. Hopefully it'll stay put this time. A little movement is okay, but if it starts to move too much, you basically won't be able to draw anything. Keep on in toward the center and just make sure that center is clean. So generally speaking it's easier to dip your middle three fingers but since I want the accent spiral on my ring finger I'm actually dipping my middle, my ring, and my pinky. So I'm going to try to just line them up as best I can. It's a little hard with my pinky so much shorter than the other two nails, but I'm just mainly trying to make sure that spiral is in a good position. And then I'm going to go ahead and dip and make sure the surface is clear. I feel like I'm kind of holding my breath here, not literally, but figuratively. And, all right, that's not too bad. Not centered, but at least I got the spiral on there. I'm going to go ahead and remove the latex. And then, of course, I will be cleaning up around the edges. But one other thing I did want to mention, if I can just finish this up here is in regards to bubbles. Um, I try to do everything I can to avoid getting bubbles in the first place, but if you do get them, there are ways to prevent them from ruining your whole design. God, there we go. Could not find that edge. Um, the thing that I usually do if I do end up with bubbles like you can see on my index finger here. Actually, let me zoom in even a little bit more. Um, you can see here I've got two fairly large bubbles and you want to let the polish mostly dry. And then with my orange stick, I'm just going to go ahead and start to press it flat. You do not want to top coat directly over them because they'll pop. 
and then you'll be able to have see your base color underneath so it would be like a white spot on there but just go ahead and press them as flat as you can and then top coat and it should work out and not be very noticeable at all So here's the finished manicure and I'm really pleased with how this turned out overall. The one problem I did have was I was getting a lot of bubbles and the larger a bubble is actually the easier it is to deal with. Smaller bubbles are kind of more troublesome. You can see here on my index finger the bubble that I pressed flat is really pretty unnoticeable unless you really get in there closely. But on some of my other nails you can probably see almost kind of a speckled look and that's due to smaller bubbles that I was not able to deal with as effectively. Uh, just to give you guys some looks at my test strips, this is the spiral that I ended up going with. On the other side here we have the spiral that I usually do which is drawn on top of the burst pattern and you can see the difference side by side. This one is a lot simpler this one has a lot more detail to it. I also had considered sponging the colors on my nail and then doing an overlay in white and clear. And I'm not sure how well that's coming across on camera. Even in person, it's very faint. And that's the reason why I decided not to go with that. I thought about using black, but then I thought that it wouldn't really look like Easter. And I also did some testing with all seven colors from this collection. And as you can see on this strip here, they all seven marble together really nicely. So you could pick any of those colors to go together and be pretty safe in knowing that they're going to work. So the other thing about this is that it does glow under a black light. Um, they're pastels, but they're still neons, and I'll try, sometimes it's really hard to get black light pictures, but I'll try to include one at the end here. So I hope you guys all enjoyed, and have a lovely Easter, and as always, thanks for watching.